from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, November the 30th, 2023. Three people were killed this morning in a terror attack at the entrance to Jerusalem. Israel Police Chief Superintendent Mirit Ben Mayor reported from the scene. This morning, 7.30 a.m. here in the entrance of uh, Jerusalem at a bus uh, stop. While many people were standing there, innocent civilians waiting for a bus, two terrorists arrived uh, in a car, uh, came out of the car holding uh, weapons and shot all over, uh, injuring 16 uh, civilians, 16 innocent people, uh, which uh, are now uh, getting uh, medical treatment. Unfortunately, three of them have already uh, lost their lives, uh, a 24-year-old, a 72-year-old, and a 65-year-old uh, were murdered in this uh, terror attack. The three were identified as 24-year-old Livia Dickman, 72-year-old Eli Melech Wasserman, and 65-year-old Hannah Ifragan. Two off-duty IDF soldiers and an armed civilian in the area returned fire, killing the terrorists as they tried to get back to their vehicle for more ammunition. Terror group Hamas claimed responsibility for the murderous attack. The temporary truce between Israel and Hamas continued today, allowing for the return of more hostages abducted from Israel by Hamas during the October 7th massacre 55 days ago. Two Israeli women were freed from Gaza earlier today. Another six hostages were released later tonight. The IDF had said late last night that the operational pause will continue in light of the mediator's efforts to continue the process of releasing the hostages and subject to the terms of the framework. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel to discuss the extended truce issue and hostage releases, meeting today with Israel's President Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who thanked Blinken for the support of the U.S. administration and its continued help in getting the hostages home. After meeting Netanyahu one-on-one, -on -one, Blinken also sat down with his war cabinet today. The prime minister sharing a video message with the public about what he told Blinken in their meeting, which was shortly after the terror attack this morning outside Jerusalem claimed by Hamas. Netanyahu said, I told him that it is the same Hamas, it is the same Hamas that perpetrated the terrible massacre on October the 7th, and the same Hamas that is trying to murder us everywhere. Telling Blinken we have sworn to eliminate Hamas, nothing will stop us saying we will continue this war until we achieve the three goals, freeing all of our hostages, completely eliminating Hamas, and ensuring that no threat like this will ever come from Gaza again. On his end, Blinken said of the meeting today with the Prime Minister, Netanyahu and I discussed efforts to secure the release of all remaining hostages and accelerate delivery of life-saving humanitarian assistance into Gaza. Blinken saying, I emphasize the need for Israel to take every possible measure to avoid civilian harm. And to Herzog, Blinken said, I reiterated the United States' ongoing support of Israel's right to defend itself in compliance with international humanitarian law and emphasized the need for tangible steps to de-escalate tensions in the West Bank. Blinken also met with opposition leader Yair Lapid and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Later today, meeting with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. And Netanyahu and Herzog today also shared condolences over the passing of Henry Kissinger, the first Jewish Secretary of State. Prime Minister calling Kissinger a great statesman, scholar, and friend. Herzog saying of Kissinger, a Jewish teenager who fled the Nazis and went on to become a giant who shaped world politics with his own hands and mind, noting the historic processes he led, Herzog said, including the laying of the foundations for Israel's peace agreement with Egypt. Henry Kissinger died yesterday at his home in Connecticut. He was 100 years old. Well, Israel's jazz community is coming together this Sunday to help some of the survivors of the October 7th atrocities committed by Hamas. 
A four hours long jazz marathon will feature 16 internationally acclaimed Israeli jazz bands and numerous artists to aid survivors of the Nova Music Festival massacre that claimed over 360 lives on October the 7th, with dozens taken hostage and survivors in trauma. Donations for the Jazz Initiative will go to Safe Heart, which connects survivors to mental health professionals providing crucial support. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, November the 30th, at 7 o'clock, families of hostages, clergy, interfaith leaders, and elected officials, as well as students, take part in a Sinai Temple community gathering in Los Angeles to show support for Israel and unity in the face of anti-Semitism. At 8, JBS strategic analyst David Harris sits with Shachar Azani for discussion. At 8.30, Harris is joined by Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan. At 9, Matan Peleg and Douglas Altabef are on L'Chaim. At 10, the opening plenary of the Jewish National Fund USA's Global Conference for Israel, live from Denver, Colorado, with Gilad Erdan, as well as the governor of Colorado, Jared Polis, and others. And coming up next, Shachar Azani speaks with Efrat Mashakawa, the niece of Margalit and Gadi Moses, who were kidnapped by Hamas on that horrible Saturday of October the 7th. Margalit has since been released. Gadi is still being held in captivity. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, November the 30th, 2023. I'm Tisha Bader. Am Yisrael. Chai. <laughs>